All right, li living your best life, this is what we're looking at. Um, it's kind of a popular thing now. Have you noticed? It, it's popping up everywhere. Live your best life. It's in magazines. It's on radio, on TV. It's in books. Uh, live your best life. But why are we still looking to find it? Why, why is it still popping up? It must be that we don't have the answer, huh? And that's the point of our time together. The answer is only found in Jesus. He's the one that has come to give us our best, best life right now. He said this when he came on the earth. He said, I have come that they might have life. Read the rest of it and have it to the full. Something about knowing Jesus and being with him that empowers us to live our best life right now. Uh, and, and you can't find it anywhere else. I mean, honestly, if you could find it somewhere else, don't you think we would have found it by now? Don't you think there would have been that magazine article? Don't, don't you think there would have been that person that lives this perfect life and says, this is how you do it, man? Would have written the book. But there's another book then and another book and a book after that. Jesus came. He comes to give us our best life right now. We're looking at this longest sermon that, that Jesus uh, preached as far as recorded sermon. And it begins with a thing called the Beatitudes where Jesus says, blessed are they for they will. Blessed are they for they will. Blessed are they for they will. What he's talking about is living the best life right now. And, and, and we look at this and so often we think, oh, um, that must mean I have to do something so that I get something. Uh, I, I, I have to do something with this big, big heaviness on me, right? I got to do something so I, do, so I can get something. I mean, that's how the world works, right? If I'm up my best life, I better do everything I have to do, and then maybe I'll get a chance to taste it. But the neat thing about this word, blessed, go put that up for me, is the connotation of it is that it's a gift from God. Uh, some people translate this word blessed is happy. Um, if you understand it right, it's, it's okay, but, but so much of the time we look at that as kind of being surplus. Have a happy, you know? Everything's good. Have a happy. Just put it on your face. That's not what the word means. It's more uh, of a joy in our very soul, the very essence of who we are deep down. I think a word that is more akin than happiness is, is the Hebrew word shalom. Peace of body, soul, mind, and spirit. We have it all together, huh? And it grows out of this relationship with God. I, I was thinking about this. You, that's what you do when you preach a series. You think about it, yeah. And um, I, I thought about my mom. Uh, she lived to be two days before she would have turned 90 years old. And towards the end of her life, uh, the last five, six, seven, eight years, she would say often, you know, I've enjoyed every phase of my life. That always amazed me. I've enjoyed every phase of my life. And you think, well, she must have had a fairy tale life. Nah, there's hard stuff there. Right after my mom and dad got married, she, my mom was a nurse, and, and she contracted tuberculosis from her patients. They had no cure back then. So she was in a sanitarium for three years. She even told my dad he should maybe go, go look for another wife so he could have a family. Yeah. And my dad, my dad told me that story. They looked at me like, said, yeah, right, I'm going to do that, huh? That must have been hard, though. I've enjoyed every phase of my life. I, um, I've talked about my brother and sister. You guys know I have a brother and a sister. I've talked about them a lot. But I had a second brother. He was born when I was in the sixth grade. He died three days later. And I remember uh, maybe two or three weeks later, we were putting the baby clothes away. I was helping mom package them up. And, and she burst into tears. And I just didn't know what to do. I just, just hugged her. I've enjoyed every phase of my life. How do you say that? I remember when my dad died, maybe 15 years before my mom died. They, they had a relationship that was amazing. Um, people used to stop them on the street and say, man, you guys look in love. Honest, that, that's the kind of relationship it was. And so I called her six months later, and I, and I said, how you doing, Mom? A and she said, well, you know, it would be e easy to curl up and die. Uh, but that's not what God wants me to do, and God is with me. I've enjoyed every phase of my life. 
How do you say that? Because this gift of blessedness has been given to you. And that's where you live your best life. In this relationship with God that transcends all of those things. In this fullness of the very essence of our being and our soul that is filled up with Jesus. In the beginning of Matthew, Jesus steps onto the scene and he says, repent for the kingdom of God is near. We always think of repentance as, oh, I did something wrong. And yeah, we've done lots of stuff wrong. But really what the word means, it, you've heard me say this, but the, it's pronounced, I kind of like the metanoeo in the Greek, right? It means to change your mind. And really Jesus is stepping onto the scene and said, you know, every place else you've looked to be filled up, every place else you've looked to have your best life now, it's not working, is it? So change your mind. And receive the kingdom that I bring. That's what he's saying here. Everything in Matthew, I believe, before this sermon, before the Beatitudes, kind of sets them up. And everything afterwards kind of explains them. So he steps into our reality. He says, hey, change your mind. I got something better for you. And then he starts to talk. And, and, and this is what he says. This is what, where we've been. Blessed are the poor in spirit. What does that mean? Oh, yeah, what, what, what that means, you remember? It means that, hey, I acknowledge I haven't found my own way. It hasn't worked. I need to change my mind and know that within me I'm poor. I can't find it, but it's a gift that God gives me. And you're blessed. This is a gift that God gives us to understand that so that we can live in the kingdom of heaven. That's what we were created to do. And, and then he says, blessed are those who mourn, who understand that things aren't right, for they will be comforted. And what is that comfort? It's the presence of Jesus in our life. The Christmas story in Matthew, it's very short, but it quotes from the Old Testament. It says, Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Oh, there, blessed are those who mourn because they'll know Jesus is with them. Emmanuel, God with us. Blessed are the meek. This isn't like being a little squeaky mouse. We heard this last week. It's, is it just about walking with God? Like Jesus did, I've come to do the will of my Father. And finding out who we are and being full, because this is what we were created to do. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Yeah, as we walk with God, we can be, con we can be certain that he'll take care of us. Even when I'm sitting in a sanitarium for three years with tuberculosis, even when my child dies, even when my husband dies. Because Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. This is where we've been, and today, he continues, and he says this, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Hunger and thirst for, I'm trying to lose a little weight, you guys do that at the beginning of the year sometimes? Yeah, I'm trying to lose a little weight. I hate those hunger pains. You, you, you know what I mean? When you get hungry, and it's like, just for a moment, if you can't get through them, it's like you're going nuts, and finally you get through them. Okay, I'm okay now. Huh? It says you're blessed if you have that kind of a hunger or a thirst. You ever been hiking, and the water's gone? And you're really thirsty. You got cotton mouth? No? Well, blessed are those who hunger and thirst like that for something, for this rightness in their lives. Do you have those little snapshots in your life where you look back and, and just for a moment things were awesome, maybe even perfect? I, I, I thought about that. Uh, just Even when I was a kid, I remember um, I was in the fifth grade, and the last day of school, we had this big track meet, but it was very friendly. It was with just everybody in the school, and everybody had a great time. It was in Southern California. You never raised in Southern California, right? And this day was idyllic. It was beautiful. It was gorgeous, and everybody loved one another. And we, and we came, and we were like 200 of us in the, in, in, in the school, and we came up in this nice, beautiful, grassy area, and we just kind of rested there with each other and laughed, and we had a good time. And I'm sitting there, and it's like perfect, right? And then I think, but this is the end. This is the last day, man. 
just for a moment, we get a taste of it sometimes. Remember, I was a, a sophomore in high school. I played on this football team. Never before or since have I had this experience. We were so tight. We were a family. And the, the amazing thing was everybody else was a year older than I was and they, and, and, and that, that played and, and they, they accepted me and brought me into the family. It was the most amazing experience. It was just awesome. And, and we're coming home on the bus at the end of the last game where we've missed the championship by two yards. You're on the two-yard line. And we didn't score. And, 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 and we're coming home. And, and one of the leaders, his name was Brian. He was a quarterback. He, he kind of cracked this off-color joke. Because we were all kind of down in the dumps, right? And he cracks this off-color joke, and we laugh, and we're together for that moment. And everything is perfect again. And then there's silence, because we all know it's done. And we'll never experience that again. Do you have snapshots like that in your life? Where everything seems perfect, but it's just for a moment. Do you hunger and thirst for those things? Do you hunger and thirst to be right inside, to be whole, to be filled up, to be complete? And, and it's like we can, we can dip our finger in cool water and just get a taste of it. It doesn't last. Jesus came so that we could live every moment in that reality. Being filled up. <laughs> we all long to be filled up with rightness. Isn't that right? But we never quite get there. And what Jesus is saying, blessed are those who see it and who hunger and thirst for it. Who knows that we need it. We don't stuff it and, and lie to ourselves or think there's no hope. You see, the, the easy way out is to stuff the hungering and thirst and live as if you can't possibly be filled up. Like a dead sponge. Huh? Jesus says you're blessed. It's a gift from God if you know there's more than that. And he comes to fill you up. This word uh, righteousness, uh, the Greek word is diakosune. I couldn't get a long A in there. It's not diakosuna, it's diakosune, right? But I, I couldn't do that. Uh, and it actually means the righteousness of God. So blessed are those uh, who hunger and thirst for this righteousness that only can come from God, which makes sense because this whole series, we've kind of been discovering that it can't be about me. It can't come from me because I always fall short, huh? So really what you're hungry and thirsting for is only something that God can give you, the righteousness of God. So where's that found? Where's that at? Where does he make everything right and whole? Right here. Right here at the cross. This is the righteousness of God. This is where he makes everything complete and whole. Because of this, all of creation will be remade. Because of this, you and I might be born again, that we might be filled up in him. You know, lots of times, uh, many theologians, they say, this is, th this is about a courtroom, and it's about God declaring you forensically, right? Declaring you not guilty in Jesus so that God now accepts you. And, and you know, a part of that's true. I, I'm, I'm not saying it's, it, that, that's wrong. But there's more to it than this. We... we that, that kind of mathematical equation falls short. In, in the Old Testament, it says that we receive double for our sins. Double for the places we foul up. What, what's that double business? It's got to be more than just forgiveness, see? What it is is relationship with God. Connection. Isn't that how any of us experience fullness? to be connected with each other. See, we were made, <laughs> we were made only to be happy and whole, being filled up in God. We can, we can work and, and look anywhere else and, and we'll come short. We may have snapshots, <laughs> but nothing more than that. 
this righteousness that God gives us in Jesus, it's, it's not simply about a judge without emotion hammering the hammer and saying not guilty. It's, it's about a father putting his arms around his child who's come to say, I'm sorry, and to tell him he's part of the family. It's about friends coming together again after they've fouled up. And it's about a marriage who reconnects as they've drifted apart and they're one again. That's what this is about. That's where we're filled up. Jesus stepped onto the earth. He says, I'm the bread of life, the righteousness of God. I'm I'm the one that fills you up, see? And he says that he's living water for a parched soul. You see, I don't make this stuff up. <laughs> you hunger and thirst to be right? Jesus, it's why he came, to fill you up. Jesus said, come, all you are thirsty. And here's the gift aspect of it. Lots of times we talk about, okay, what do I got to do? What do I got to do? Oh, I got to do this. I gotta. No, 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 no. This is a gift. To be blessed of God is a gift. Come all you who are thirsty, you have no money. Come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk. Read the rest of it with me. Without and without cost. It's got to be a gift, right? Isn't that kind of how the love a parent gives to their child? Especially when they fell down. It's a gift. goes on, why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? <laughs> Go, put the next one up, Keith, please. Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and your soul will delight in the richest affair. You know, it's kind of like that sponge thing. Uh, have you ever cleaned something really dirty with a sponge? And then you wring it out, and it's putrid, and it stinks, and it's dirty. We're meant to be filled up. The problem is that we fill ourselves up with the wrong crud. And so we're full of stuff that is putrid, and it stinks, and it's dirty. That's what he's saying here. Why spend your effort on that stuff? Be filled up with this gift I give you. This gift you were created for. This gift of living in my presence and in my love and in my resurrection power. Eat what is good. <laughs> and you'll be filled up. I love this analogy uh, of, of a sponge, huh? And it's so interesting to me because you can almost see, I don't know if they had, they must have had sponges, but natural sponges, they were really uh, expensive. So maybe that's why Jesus didn't use this analogy. Go, go ahead. Uh, uh, but, but when he said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Think about the sponge, guys. Think about the fact that we are made as sponges. And we're lifeless and dead without being filled. And so we look to fill ourselves with all kinds of stuff that doesn't work. And we look for our best life now in that stuff, and it never works. Jesus comes to fill us up with the stuff that does work. His spirit and his love and his peace and his joy. You're blessed if you know this hunger and thirst in your soul. You may not know it, but you're thirsting to be right. This rightness is a gift from God. It's meant to fill you up. Jesus said in Ephesians 5, do not get drunk on wine. I'm sorry, the, Paul said in Ephesians 5, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. See, there's all kinds of stuff. A debauchery, you know, that, you know, for years I didn't know what the heck that word means. It means you're out of control, man. So it kind of makes sense with, with too much wine, doesn't it? Is it like you can't, can't walk straight, huh? You can't stand on your feet? That, that's what it means. Don't be drunk on wine. In other words, don't look to anything else to be filled up. Because you end up being out of control. Have you experienced that? It's not just with wine, is it? 
<laughs> but rather be filled with the very spirit of Christ. And this is a gift to you. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. I think there's another side to this. I was uh, at, at Walmart late this last week. I had a, a Bible study here, and, and, it was, and I had to get some groceries. And so I'm, I'm in line. You know, you can get lost in that joint. You just can't find your way out. It's a big. And, and, and so it's like 11 o'clock at night, and I'm in this line, and they have one check stand open, so it's a long line. And, and I'm sitting there. And I looked at the checker, and I, I'm, not tell, I'm not kidding you. I, if he was a day younger than 75, then my eyes are lying, right? And, and he looked so tired. Oh, my gosh, he looked so tired. And it was obvious that every movement hurt his body. And, and I sat in line, and my heart just went out to him. He looked half dead trying to work. And it was a long line, and so, you know, we got all those candy bars up there to talk to you. And so, right, and so I, I, I grab a candy bar, and I have to kind of reach around this gal to do it, say, I'm excuse me, I have a little conversation. And, and, and I look, she's a little unsteady, and I look down, she's buying a gallon of vodka. And my heart went out to her. And, and the older man that was checking, he got relieved by this young kid. And if he weighed an ounce less than 450 pounds, then my eyes are lying. <laughs> and it was so painful for him to move. And my heart went out to him. Pastor Nathan, uh, after worship on Sunday, he had to rush home because they had to take a little baby to the hospital and have a feeding tube and a breathing, a breathing tube put in because of this virus. Uh, and then he went home to take care of the kids on Monday while she was still at the hospital with the little baby and both their kids got strep. God, it shouldn't be that way, huh? My heart went out to them. These are just symptoms, right? Do you... Hunger and thirst for righteousness for those around you? For rightness? Whether it's, whether it's hurt or pain or sickness or death or, or brokenness or struggles. Whether it's, it's uh, sexual slavery. Whether it's the, the culture of death that, that, that finally comes to its fruition, abortion. Whether it's just the emptiness that you see in people's hearts and lives. The lostness of folks looking to live their best life in place they'll never, places they'll never find it. Do you hunger and thirst for rightness for them? You know what Jesus said? He says you'll be filled up. That's kind of the way it works, isn't it? I've talked about uh, sponges. Jesus said, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink, right? I, I kind of talked ab about this sponge thing. You know, lots of times we, when we talk about stuff like that, we think it's a one-time deal. I chose Jesus, so I'm filled up now, right? Now, if you look at the verbs in this blessed day that hunger and thirst for righteousness, it's an ongoing thing. We're, the more we're filled up, the more we see we are hungry and thirsty. And, and, and it's an ongoing thing that Jesus continually fills us up. Why is that? He says, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, read the rest of it. Streams of living water will flow from within him. It's squeezed out out of us, you see? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for, those, for we will be filled. Why? We'll have the fullness of being able to squeeze out the love of Jesus Christ in our world. That's what it's all about, you see? Being filled up and squeezing it out. That's what Jesus said, isn't it? Go ahead. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him would later receive. Points to Pentecost. 
3,000 came to faith. They were baptized. You remember the promise? You received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this promise is for you and for your children and for all who the Lord our God will call. This promise is for you. You who hunger and thirst for righteousness in your soul and in your world. Be filled up with Jesus. And he's a never-ending well. And so you can squeeze it out every day. You can squeeze out the love and compassion and work of Jesus into our world. Day of Pentecost, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to squeeze him out. Go ahead. How does this all end? Peter knew. We are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. Read the rest of it. The home of righteousness. When Jesus comes, it will all be made brand new. Everything will be right in him. Putting his words into practice, uh, at the end of this sermon, uh, this Beatitudes sermon, at the end of it, he tells us, Jesus tells a story. And he says, hey, the wise man, he builds his house on the rock. Well, who is this wise man? He's the one who hears my words and puts them into practice. So we're going to try to ask the question, okay, how do I put these words into practice? It's real simple today. Here's the first one. This moment, receive anew, or maybe for the first time, the righteousness, the rightness of Christ as a gift by faith. Be filled up in Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit and understand it's not a one-time deal where you're on your own now. It's like the river of life continually flows through you in Jesus. Number two, now, on whom can you intentionally squeeze it out? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, uh, we hunger and thirst to be right inside. <laughs> uh, we look to so many different places, uh, and so we're filled up with the wrong stuff, stuff that stinks sometimes. Sometimes we squeeze out that stinking stuff on those around us in our world. Lord, we're sorry. We thank you that you would give us this gift of seeing that uh, that, that which we hunger and thirst for is only found in you. We ask that you would touch each of us with your spirit, that you would fill us up in this moment with your life and your love and your compassion. <laughs> we thank you, Lord, that uh, we're not on our own after that, that you are the river of life who continually brings fresh water of your grace into our lives. We pray, Lord, that, that we might trust that and believe it so that we boldly squeeze out your love and your compassion and your work and to those around us, and to our world. We pray, Lord, that, um, that you would never make us um, dull uh, to the hurt and, and the lack of rightness in our world and, and in ourselves. But rather, Lord, we pray every day uh, we might come to you and be filled up in your spirit personally so that we can squeeze it out in our world. We praise your name. We thank you. And all God's people said, Amen. Yes.